Dave Palumbo here with RxMuscle.com. And as you guys know, I like to give a weekly rant or talk about something uh, that interests me, you know, and hopefully it might interest you guys as well. I know that I posted a photo. I was going, you know, as, I, as you know, I'm, I'm moving to Florida in two days and I was packing up some old stuff and looking through some old pictures. By the way, I'm going to post a lot of these pictures because most people have never seen these. And there was a picture I found of Nasser and I backstage at a show. And uh, it was posted on, uh, on my Facebook, and then someone recopied it and posted it in a couple other places around the forums and stuff like that. And people wanted to know what the story was behind this shot. I had never met Nasser El Sambadi. I was a fan, huge fan of his at the time um, because he was such a freak. He kind of came out of nowhere. And uh, my, he was kind of friendly with a, with a mutual friend of mine, uh, Josh Friedman. And I know Josh is probably going to watch this and, and, and you know, text me after this. Josh, I don't know what his relationship was, but they, they became friendly, and they would always talk. And... So Josh took me backstage. Now, the the backstory on this is I was in Dubai in 1990. This was 1996. I went to Dubai. I was six or eight weeks out from the USA Championships. I went to Dubai to do an appearance for Worldwide Sports. They had the pro, the, the pure protein bar, uh, and which later was sold uh, with Metrex and packaged into the uh, you know to the company is today. It was it was the best protein bar of the day. Anyway. We, I went out to Dubai. Dubai at that time did not look like the city it is today. It looked like basically a sandcastle, okay? And there was one nice hotel, which is where we were staying. And I was with Milo Sarshev and uh, Laura Bass and, and a couple other bodybuilders. And we went around and we did. Uh, we, we sat at the expo. We guest posed there. And I flew back. Now, at the time, there was no direct flight from back from Dubai. And people smoked on the plane when you would leave, when you would leave Europe. So I had to fly from Dubai to Holland. Uh, they like almost lost our luggage, or they may have lost our luggage. I think they did lose the luggage, and they, it didn't make the connecting flight. And I got back to New York. I was like a 20-hour ordeal. I didn't sleep well because they smoke, and I was like choking the whole time. And I was like 300 pounds or 290 pounds at the time. I got off the plane. My uh, at the time, my my girlfriend uh, Barbara picked me up and drove me right to the Metropolitan Championships in the city on no sleep. I get there, and Josh is like, I got to get you backstage. You got to meet Nasser. And I, I was all excited anyway. I'm like, yeah, sure, sure. I go backstage, and there's Nasser El Sambadi looking huge. You know, he's off, he was off season. He was like probably over 300 pounds, you know, but he wasn't cut or anything like by any means. And he was getting ready. He was oiling up to, to guest pose. And Josh is like, Dave, take off your clothes. Look, I got to get a picture of you two guys. And I was embarrassed. I really didn't want to do it because I was kind of a fan, and I, and I didn't want to like – do that. I, I just got off this flight. I hadn't eaten. I was 20 hours. I felt like crap, but I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm glad he, I did it because I got the picture. But uh, so I take off the thing and I, I just was, I was exhausted and uh, Nasser got, and then I saw the picture later. And I, of course, at the time I was obsessed with being huge. I was like, man, Nasser stepped up on me. He looked, made, made me look smaller. And, <laughs> and so started the friendship of Nasser El Sambadi and me. And this continued through the next 10 years, you know, we would go do guest posings together. We were in Hawaii together. And, you know, Nasser was the kind of guy that he would be like, oh, Dave, you look very good. Uh, yes, yes. And I would go to the bathroom. And if I was hanging out with some girl, he would, like, try to, you know, give him his room key. And he'd be like, oh, I am Nasser's buddy. And uh, I don't know why you're with that guy. I speak eight languages. And, you know, he is a, a drug monster. And, and, you know, and Nasser would, he would do anything to try to put the kibosh on you so he could move in on, on, on whatever, you know, woman you were hanging out with at the time. Uh, but, you know, I, I knew who Nasser was. I didn't care about it. Um, I, I accepted him for who he was. I thought he was a great bodybuilder. He was very smart. He was funny, you know. And, but unfortunately, when, when he stopped competing, uh, he became very bitter with the sport. And I don't know if he felt like he should have been able to go longer or, or what the case was. I mean, the guy won the Arnold Classic. He should have won the 1997 uh, Mr. Olympia. He easily beat Dorian Yates, and Dorian got the win for his number six. Uh, and I think Nasser was really never the same after that. He he looked great in the '98 uh, uh, Olympia when Ronnie and and was first and won his first Olympia, and then uh, Flex was second. He was third, Nasser, and he looked great there too. But he just couldn't beat these genetic freaks. It was it was an era of like you know shape, symmetry, and size, and that was just too much for Nasser. Nasser always you know people criticized his back, uh, but you know. I remember the Nasser that I had a great time with when he was in the midst of competing and he felt good about himself. Unfortunately, like I said, after his career was over, he kind of deteriorated. Uh, he started bad-mouthing the sport. He even bad-mouthed me and Greg Kovacs, who were really good friends of his, uh, or at least we thought we were. Um, and, you know, eventually he succumbed to, I believe, kidney disease. 
uh, and uh, he's no longer with us. So may he rest in peace. You know, I hope he's watching down, laughing over there because we did have some good times together. And I, you know, I, I got to be honest, I never ever laughed as much as when I was with Nasser. He just had that. He had a very wry sense of, of humor. He knew exactly to f- how to find people's weaknesses. I mean, he's the only guy who could make fun of uh, Dorian Yates. He used to call him Backzilla. Because he felt that he only had a back and he had no other body parts. And I, I remember once I was coming, uh, I, one of his last shows, he competed at the uh, Dallas Europa Super Show. And we were coming up the expo, uh, the escalator at the Dallas Convention Center. And I said, Nasser, I had to go out there. How did you feel you did? He goes, I, I was beat by a blind guy. And that, uh, there was a, there's a blind IPB pro, Greg Rando, who won the Team Universe. And uh, Nasser was, was humiliated. He was so he felt so terrible that he was beaten by this guy. Here he was, you know, the guy who should have won the Olympia. He won the Arnold Classic and a, and, and a blind bodybuilder beat him, which it was absurd at the time the way he said it. But I was actually – I was trying to choke back the laughter because the way he was telling the story, it was very funny, even though he was not amused by it whatsoever. Uh, he also was a you know, great character because he had a photographic memory. He remembered every detail of every conversation he ever had. It was mind-boggling. You, you, the guy was incredible, and I'm sure that's why he was able to speak so many languages. I think he spoke like seven languages because the guy had – he just memorized everything. It was – you mentioned one time to him, and he'll remind you of what you told him you know, three years earlier. Uh, it could have been in, in, in a passing conversation in a bar. He just had that memory. I, I think he was too smart for his own good, and he probably should have been doing something else other than bodybuilding. Why he was so enamored with bodybuilding, I don't know. Maybe he was it was the ego thrill of it. Maybe he was you know made fun of as a kid. I don't know what the deal was, but that picture. Whenever I see that picture, that that's my most fondest memory of Nasser El Sambadi because it was it was pure. It was I was a fan. It was like meeting you know someone that I looked up to, and it made me believe in myself because when I saw how good I looked next to one of the, the top bodybuilders in the world, I said, hey, I could be great at this sport. So Nasser, if you're watching that on us now, I thank you, my friend. And I say, good night, Nasser, somebody. <laughs>